From the deepest black in the Dinka of South Sudan to beige in the sun of South Africa, dark skin is often associated with Africans. But different groups of people in Africa have almost every skin color known to man. Dark skin is a type of human skin color that is rich in melanin pigments. People with very dark skin are often referred to as black people, although this usage can be ambiguous in some countries where it is also used to specifically refer to different ethnic groups or populations. There are different shades and tones of dark skin which have been placed in eight different categories, namely one, marshmallow, which can be found in people like Zoe Kravitz, an actress. Two, pretty pecan, where we find people like Rita Dominic, Rihanna, or Beyonce. Three, peanut butter truffle. People like Shimel Iman have this color. Four, alluring amber. Actress Megan Good is known for the skin color. Five, brown caramel. People like Nia Long and Zoe Saldana are known for this color. Sixth, milk chocolate. Gabriel Union, Issa Rae, and Nigeria's actress Ini Edo have this color. Seven, Espresso Brown. Actress Viola Davis, Lupita Nyong'o, and Nigeria's Linda Osifo are perfect examples. And the last one, Dark Cacao. Alec Wek, the famous model, and the Dinka people of South Sudan. After the colonization of the Americas in Africa, colorism evolved from racism, primarily through the practice of slavery and colonialism. Slavery was done systematically, designed to create division, not only between black and white people, but amongst black people. So the question now is, what is colorism? Yes, I have little knowledge. I don't know what that is. Um, I think I have an idea of what it is. I think I have an idea. My take on colorism, first of all, what is colorism? Colorism is simply the discrimination amongst people with color, of course. And um, the moment the next person is seeing my color as inferior, the person is a colorist. And the moment I feel my color is not good enough, I'm also a colorist. Colorism or shadism is a form of prejudice and or discrimination in which people who share similar ethnicity traits or perceived rates are treated differently based on the social implications that come with the cultural meanings that are attached to skin color. In simple terms, for simple assimilation, colorism is the preference, discrimination and prejudice of light-skinned people over dark-skinned people. Another question that is better to raise is, is colorism racism? The answer is, yes it is, but it is way more than racism. If it were only racism, then it would be one race being prejudicial to another. This, in my opinion, is the saddest part about colorism, is that Africans are prejudicial amongst themselves and think others superior because of the shade of their skin. I am in no way trivializing the ugliness of racism, but truth is, colorism would be more bearable if it was from people who were completely different racial background who are doing this. To those who have experienced colorism, whether in the most subtle way, like a passing comment, remark, or even a joke, and those who have outrightly been treated harshly because of it, I believe it is probably the most perplexing experience ever because to be discriminated against by your own kind is quite painful. In order to see the reality of colorism, I got to talk to two young women who have experienced colorism firsthand, and we asked them some questions to listen to their story and get a proper hang of things. Ms. Zuntari Nyame is a victim of colorism. This is her story. My first encounter was when I was, I think, 15 years yeah, because my sister, we are in the same church with her. 
So whenever we go to the church, like people in the church will be like, are you sure this is your sister? Because she she has like um, lighter skin than me and more darker. So people will be wondering whether she's my sister or not. But to me, I just feel like it's normal. It's not, it's not a problem. I conditioned myself like not to worry about what people say. Since the skin was not like from them, it's from God, it's just natural. So I conditioned myself not to worry about it. My immediate brother, the one after him, the me, sometimes you will be like, are you sure we are from the same mother, the same dad? But I just feel normal, like the thing doesn't bother me since I just take it as a joke. Like it's just normal to me. This very twisted way of thinking has made skin bleaching the most common cosmetic procedure in Africa. Statistics compiled by the World Health Organization in 2011 showed that 40% of African women bleach their skin. In some countries, the figure is higher. A staggering 77% of women in Nigeria, actually, I would say 90%, 59% in Togo, 35% in South Africa, 27% in Senegal and 25% in Mali use skin lightening products. The mindset of the lighter skinned, the more beautiful or better is a norm in Africa. In Nigeria specifically, to become more socially acceptable, it is normal for a girl to start bleaching at a very young age. To get the professional advice and views about the skin tones in general, I and the crew visited Dr. Physic Wellness Center situated in Apple Legislative Quarters here in Abuja. They offer safe and medical skin treatments and procedures without altering the skin tone. Ladi Audu is a certified laser and IPL esthetician from Wires Canadian Academy. She is also CBD certified in aesthetics with the Institute of Beauty Secret Training Academy in South Korea. She has close to a decade of experience and is currently a beauty skin consultant with Dr. Physique Health and Wellness Center. When clients come and they tell me personally that, oh, I would like to lighten up my skin. Some who are first just saying, I want to bleach my skin. And I tell them in this polite way that um, long term, it is going to damage your skin, you're prone to skin cancer, you're prone to kidney failure because the more chemicals you put into your skin, the more you um, you have to make your kidney expel a whole lot of toxins from your body. And at the long run, there's a very high tendency that if you don't take care of your skin properly, you will have cancer or the person will have skin cancer. Most common is in the Nigerian music and film industry. Here, beauty is skin deep and being light or skin fair is all that matters. Although there are quite a number of dark-skinned artists and actors, you would agree that the number of light-skinned people in the industry outweighs all others. Why is that so? There have been stories of talented actors being turned down because of the shade of their skin, and for acceptability have been left without no choice but to join the trend. Of note as well is the banking industry and real estate companies and firms where female employees are not directly instructed to alter the color of their skin, although in some cases they've been told, I think. But one can't help but see that banking halls have a particular set of skin shade manning the front desks. Also some real estate companies have been known to specifically request for light-skinned ladies to be employed for in order to find clients, thereby increasing sales. This is outrightly wrong. We went for the interview and a few persons um, went alongside. Some were dark skinned and some were fair skinned. And along the line, at, at first when we got there, um, more importance were given to the light skinned 
whereby the first called in the light skin ladies to come in first and ask those dark skin to stay behind. Like they selected. They said, if you know you're fair, come in first. Just come in first. Yeah. And dark skin, please hold on. And so after the interview, after they went in and came out, so the HRM came out and said, um, I'm so sorry, um, we'll be taking working with this set of people for now. We're going to call you back for, your next, uh, for the next job. We're having the next job soon and we'll be needing more um, um, workers. So we're going to call you back soon. Please be patient with us and give us more time. And our target is with the first skin ladies because they, they are more catchy. Yeah, they said it to us that they were more catchy. So we should please bear with them and be patient. They are so sorry. They were going to call us back. And so we left. That was the first, first time. And that was my first time in Abuja trying to get a job. I was confused at first because it was not um, stated. And that was my first time going for such a job. It was not a bad job. Personally, as a beauty queen, most time you've got to lose out in positions or pageants that you know you, you you could have won or you could have done better than the next person but because you know the organization is saying they want somebody with color they might not even up to the, they might not even be up to the standard but because they are light-skinned let me call it the way it is because they are light-skinned they get the job they get the role they get the positions and they make you feel less of yourself so my experience so far I'm a strong black woman and I'm proud of it, but not many people are built very strong. We need ourselves, you know. So the psychological trauma, emotional trauma, even physical traumas that you get, this has been my experience so far and that's why I'm sitting down here talking about it. Although I have no real evidence or claim to this, like I stated earlier, I couldn't get a cosmetologist to address this. Another disturbing thing I have heard is that of some mothers applying skin lightening products on their children who are dark and therefore perceived not good looking enough have had their skin lightened. These actions will leave these children growing up with the mentality that being dark skin is disastrous for their very existence. Whether we agree to it or not, there is a psychological effect of being told you are not good enough because of your skin color. To look at how that is, we spoke to a psychologist and a counsellor who also happened to be a legal practitioner, Barrister Chimps. We also seized the opportunity to ask if there are any legal implications. Let me start by saying that colorism, like its twin, racism, is um, integrated in our system completely. It's integrated. And um, Put different or put simply, colorism is prejudice or discrimination by a group of people favoring those that who are light skinned over the dark skinned people. And you see it every day, like every day back to back. Now, the dark people are at the, are the other side of receiving nasty names. Now, who said the devil is black? Who said the devil is dark? And here, say you, you say, so black like devil. So who said the devil is dark? Why, why, why can't the devil be white? Be light skinned. Now, but the, the light skinned people are the receiving end of getting sweet and, and nice names like um, Oyibo Pepe, you know, um, tom um, white tomato, you know, stuff like that. They call them sweet names. Meanwhile, the dark skin. So colorism is very wrong, and it is fast eating the fabrics of our system with the blacks. And it is leading to our people transforming themselves from being dark skinned, which is so beautiful and so lovely, into being light skinned. As a person of faith, I can't but find a line or connection of everything I see, hear, or experience to my belief in God. It is His planet after all. We are all God's creation, all beautifully and wonderfully made. So the question that bears to mind now is how this unpleasant situation can be tackled. It is absolutely vain and shallow to say one skin is preferable to another because we are all beautiful. That's to start with yourself. You have to have 
a different heart. mindset entirely no matter the skin color or anything like just know that okay i can do this blah 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 it has to start with yourself i think people need to change their perception about it like accept the uniqueness and like the beauty in dark skin people the skin is not from people it's from god it's just natural you know black is beauty so if you have that skin just thank god because you know others that have this type of skin they usually go to the market to buy all this cream to change color first be proud of your complexion be very proud of it you are beautiful as a dark skin lady don't you know they've changed it now to brown skin girl um, brown skin you know there is a song brown skin girl it's not, they've now changed it to make it look a little Men, we are dark skin, we are dark skin. Appreciate it that way. So first is appreciate yourself for who you are. Know your what. When you know your what, your complexion has nothing to do with your what. When you know your what. So don't cave in. Be yourself. One day what you carry will make them come to look for you. Then for those that have caved in, well, it's so unfortunate. But I think my advice to them is to seek help. Because it has health implications. Some of these creams and um, mixtures they use are some of them. That is why we have high rate of um, skin cancer. In women in particular, with all due respect to the ladies, in women in particular, because some of those things, they mix a lot of rubbish. And by the time you're rubbing your skin, give it another three, four years, you start developing skin diseases, and those things develop and grow into cancer. So they should seek help now that it's still early, where it can be remedied and then return to the original skin tone that God gave you. I think we need more sensitization. You can't really stop it. You can't really stop it. It's a pandemonium. It can't leave. It can't, it can't really go away. But we need more black people movements. We have a few, but we need more hands on deck. We, 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 want, we, we want a world whereby black people anywhere, not just in Nigeria, Black people anywhere is accepted, not just accepted, they are included, you know, and they are relevant. Um, don't give up on yourself. Never let what anyone says, be it an employer, be it um, whoever it may be, never let what anyone says about you make you feel bad or see yourself less of a human being. You're unique in yourself, you're beautiful in yourself, just work on yourself and being the best version of yourself and make sure you deliver quality and skills, productivity to whatever it is you're doing and to whatever firm you're working for. They can be second to someone because of qualification, but they can't be second to someone because of color. We need, we, we, we need to do more movements we have black um black life matters black girls magic there are a few we need more of this i have a black people community i'm i'm a, I'm a member of diary of a ninja girl, girl community so it's a black girl community where we talk about the day-to-day -day lives of black girls and all that so you see we need more of this because there are people they are victims we need we need communities that will bring them closer that would wash off what they have uh, the negative things they have in their head we need we need all that we need all that because we can't really take take away these people we can't really take away colorists they are they are racist whether we like it or not they can't really go but they can get better we can show them we can tell them we can start with our kids we can tell our kids we are equal we are the same there's no preferences even if there will be it's not for color and a wonderful color like we have i don't think is one that we should talk less about we should talk more about we should preach our black gospel god never intended for our parents to be at the center of our existence who we are the way we look is for his pleasure and praise everything about us is to give him glory colorism discrimination and prejudice take over his creation it takes the glory that is due him and makes it ours. Thus, such an act is not only offensive, but repulsive to him. So I say, we can all make it a prerogative and duty to break this ugly, unpleasant cycle. If you have been predisposed to being a colorist, to practice colorism, make a deliberate, intentional decision to end it. We cannot stop the manufacture of skin products that promote colorism, nor can we prevent people from purchasing or using them. But 
we can begin gradually changing the mindset of the public, one or two persons at a time. I'm glad to say some people have already taken the steps towards this, as dark-skinned people are being celebrated for the uniqueness of their color and are taking major roles in various endeavors. They are being afforded equal opportunities, but more work is still needed. I say let's keep pushing because we can. End the discrimination. 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 End the discrimination amongst black people. We matter. Finally, I leave you the words of this famous hymn. As I said, I'm a spiritual person. All things bright and beautiful. All creatures, great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. discrimination and end the prejudice together.